Now then, now then, thought I'd do one more video today. Um, this is a video on multi-level tokens. Now this is a module that I kind of avoided using for ages. Um, I see a lot of people talking about it. And by all accounts, it is, it is very good. But for me, I felt like I didn't really want my players able to teleport around that much because I might have prep. I want to get ready in one scene or ambience. But someone I know wanted to use it and said they'd appreciate a demo. So I thought, okay, I'll install it. I'll have a look. There's actually more features to it than I thought, which I'm quite keen on. Um, so I'm going to start using multi-level tokens and show you how. Multi-level tokens lets you define an area on your scene. And if a player or an NPC or something moves into it, you could have different things happen. Teleport on them from one step. A lot of this example is stairs. You go onto these stairs and it teleports you to the map above. I thought it would be quite complicated to use. Really straightforward. So I'm going to use two scenes. I'm going to use Death House. There's loads of complicated stuff you can do. And I think that there's enough variety with this module that you might see parts of this video where you think you'll never use that. Or you might use that in this scene, but not another scene. I'm going to show you teleporting and cloning. Cloning is something I didn't know this, um, this did. And it's really cool. So I'm using Death House. Now, if you're not familiar with Death House, it's a large haunted house, but I've cranked the visibility up the lighting. There's this spiral staircase, which goes up several floors. All we care about today is the ground floor and the first floor, or if you're American, the first floor and the second floor, but I'm English, so it's ground. So Halvor is downstairs. Bartandalus is a floor up. And this spiral staircase goes all the way up the house. What I'm going to do is on my ground floor, when you have multi-level tokens installed, it doesn't add any new buttons or menus by default. It attaches itself to the tabs in your drawing tools. So what I'm going to do is use the circle draw tool. And I'm going to make a circle that will fill the gap at the bottom of the staircase. One thing I will point out here, I don't know if it's going to happen yet, but just in case you see, if when we use this, the grid isn't perfect, um, a scene up, that's a reflection of how I've made these maps in a rush. If you've watched my showcase video for Death House, you'll know that I didn't do Death House in Foundry. I've chucked it in here quickly for a video I made for my YouTube channel, and the grid isn't perfect. If your grids are good in your game, you won't have an issue with this. So with my shape drawn, I'll double click and I now have a new option called multi-level. What I like about this module is that each setting really explains um, all of its parameters, which one receives the token, which one sends the token. A lot of modules don't do that. I think a lot of software doesn't do that. So it's something I like about this. Now, I don't want anyone to teleport here. What I'm aiming for is on the higher levels or higher floors, Looking down, I want someone to be able to see if someone's at the bottom of the stairs. There are plenty of maps in Curse of Strahd, just the focus of most of my videos, where that can be really useful. Like if you are familiar with the Wizard of the Wines winery, there is a room that has like an upper veranda and there's a drop down to a room below. In the maps, there are two separate scenes, um, but you can have a combat very easily that involves people stood up here, shooting down at others, and to save jumping across maps, you can now see the movement. I'm going to show you what I mean. So I am going to go down to token cloning. And it explains tokens will be cloned from the source region to any target region with matching identifiers. I'll show you what that means. So they are cloned from the source to the target. So at the bottom of the stairs, that is the source. Give it a clone identifier so you can have all different things on one map. The complexity of the identifier you use depends on how many of these zones you intend to have on any scene. Um, I'm going to call this Death House Ground Floor. 
and I just like to copy that. You don't have to. Um, and then I'm going to save and update my drawing. Now, this took me some getting used to. As the DM, I don't think you can hide this. So you always see the purple shade. I've confirmed on my other screen, though, players do not see it. So this here is invisible to your players. Meanwhile, we go upstairs. I'm going to move Bartandalus out the way. I'm going to draw another circle. And it might take you a little bit of getting used to having the exact size right. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to go back into multi-level. I'm going to go to cloning. And like we said before, we mark a source and the source clones to the target. So I click target. I'll paste in Death House ground floor. I'll update it. And now if Bartandalus stands at the top of the stairs and I go to my foundry session and I move Halvor over. Now the grid isn't perfect because of the scaling. It can look much better on yours. Um, but you will see that if a player is stood at the bottom of the stairs or if a suit of animated armor is knocked down, as is something that can happen in the module, a player um, up here can see it happening. Now I want to try and refine that. The module works very well. That's more just the difference in size from the two zones I've made. So let's have a look. He leaves here quite quickly. So what I need to do there is just adjust the size of that circle slightly. Let me try it as that. Hmm, maybe a bit smaller. A circle staircase was quite ambitious, I suppose. Uh, oh, and now, oh, I didn't know that. As I'm moving it around, it obviously keeps him um, him bonded to that. That's, that's cool to know. If I try that, what we don't want is for him to be appearing underneath floors. So one more. If you argue that a player stood at the top could see a portion of the player beneath, I think that works quite well. Obviously not great at the top. That's down to my size and then setting it up. So that's how cloning works obviously quite a, a rush job of cloning. I'm actually going to delete that all together now. The other type you can do is um, teleport. So if I go back down to my ground floor, I'm going to move Halvor away and I'm going to delete the zone I have there. A player starts on these stairs and walks up and when they get here, they go to the next map. So what I will do is I will draw here, I'm going to go multi-token, it's a teleport. This is where someone teleport, you know, tele tokens moving into an in region will be teleported to an out region. So someone going into, and I'm going to call this um, death house, ground floor to first floor. You might have your own name and convention. Save. When I go Death House 2. Where do I want that to spit out? Now, something you need to think about. I thought my camera was over there. Where? Oh, look at that. Um, it's not as simple as putting two blocks next to each other. You don't want to have someone get spat out into the same box that teleports them back down. Otherwise, you're going to have characters trying to move and they get thrown all around. Also, think about where you want your tokens to be. Um, I'll show you what I mean now. I'm going to say when, so when someone steps on that tile going up the stairs, they're going to be teleported to the next scene up. I'm going to want them to appear here. Oh, I wasn't in my button. I want them to appear here at the top of the stairs. I'll go with about here. Now this is multi-level. This is the teleport out, and that is the out box for Def house, ground floor to first floor. Now, the way that's set up currently, there's no way of getting from the ground floor down. So what you always want to make sure you do is I don't want to put the teleport to ground floor in the same place. And I don't want to put it earlier. You don't want a player to accidentally find that part of the map is blocked off because we're going back down. 
So I would want, if I, for my teleport to get downstairs, I would want to put that maybe here. In fact, this is where it gets more complex. I'm going to put it here because what we don't want is for someone trying to head further upstairs later on to clip onto something that teleports them back down. I've picked quite a complicated map to do this with, really. But, oh, well, that's, that's what these videos are for. So this is how they get back downstairs. So I'm going to go multi-level. This is the in token. And this is death house, first floor to ground floor. Update. I'm going back down to the ground floor. When someone's coming down the stairs, where do I want them to appear? Well, this is up to you. You might want them to appear on the staircase still, or you might want them to just appear down here. I'm going to go up the staircase still. Because you might have someone who's coming down mid-fight. Multi-level. This is the outbox for, remember, I copied it earlier, death house, first floor to ground floor. Update. Now, what happens is... Halvor is walking around. He comes here. Nothing happens when he stands here because this is where upstairs spits you down to. When he steps onto this teleporter, though, now you haven't seen it. I just realized because we're playing as a player, because we're logged in as the DM, I've got on my other monitor the player's logged in perspective. It's moved the player straight away. I, as a DM, don't see that. It doesn't pull me out the scene. But if I go to Death House second floor, he's appeared now. The player perspective, when they stood on it, was it just, it closed, it closed the current scene, it gave a really quick load bar for the next floor up, and he's now there. And again, he's only seeing what he would see normally. If I clear the fog of war, because I'm in as a DM, that's what he sees when he comes upstairs. Um, and then he can look around and explore the map. When he stands back here, nothing happens. But when he goes and stands on the teleporter to go back down, again, you can't see it. He's been spat down to our location on the first floor, and he can keep going down. If I wanted to make this more complex, um, I've not got Death House third floor, or sorry, second floor to English people, uh, ready. But I could absolutely go and draw here the spit out four, going from this floor one higher. You can have multiple outputs. I could, if I had drawn that, um, if I kept that circle here for the cloning effect to see people that are here, I could have Death House 2, Death House 3, and Death House 4. No, no, Death, yeah, there's only one more. Um, all pull through the same cloning field. So people at the top floor can look all the way down and see people on the ground floor. You've got some other options with this module as well. Um, in fact, I'm going to jump to one of my other maps, Wizard of the Wines. So I've set this up quite a bit. Um, here, I've got a setup that allows you to everywhere in... So to show you the other floor, there's a set of... Let's make it daytime. There's a wooden veranda in this VAT room where combat can take place. Um, players who are stood up here can see down to the ground floor. Um, there's only about like, one flight of wooden stairs. So what I did here was I cloned it so that anything that happens in this square is visible and cloned to this square. So that means if I load this map up, I'm kind of jumping between my other screen as well here. If I can find where that player is, that player is not here. Halvor, where have you gone? There he is. He's hidden in that window. Let me just drag Halvor through the map and take him downstairs. Okay, so if I move Halvor, I'm not commanded my Foundry program. I'm in the web browser. And as I move Halvor around on the ground floor, you can see a faded version of him is moving around here um, on my token level. So I might have a ranger up here or any sort of archer. They can see the movement of players on a separate scene, a floor below, and they can attack, they can interact with them. So an archer upstairs can still be shooting at people without all of the faff and the messing that you'd have going between multiple scenes.
Um, there are other things you can do. You, know, I've, you can see here I've got the cloned area. I've also got um, teleporters for the up and down of going the stairs. There's also a loading bay in this map. Anyone up here who is stood here can see an NPC from the ground floor walking by um, across that loading bay. That's an area that has quite a lot of interaction in Wizard of the Wines. In terms of other settings, there's not much else to this. It's very self-explanatory. Um, you can force tokens to snap to a grid. Animate movement just means do they teleport from one to another or do they drag across the map like they're running? I, I like to turn that off. Um, you can also have macros trigger when someone is teleported. That's not something I've been using um, or have any involvement with yet. So if I get more into that and find some use for it, I will make a follow-up video in the future. Um, same for these levels tokens. I think that's so that you could have a, maybe in a more futuristic campaign, an elevator that someone could go to one of 10 floors with. Maybe that you use a macro to have that one pad to decide which of the floors you come out to. I'd need to look into that and learn a bit more about it. So that is multi-level tokens. I am now in the annoying position where I'm think having avoided that module for so long, I'm now looking back at several maps I've made thinking, am I going to be using my campaign's Christmas hiatus to go back and add in multi-level sort of teleportation and clone into lots of maps? Hope you found it useful. Um, as ever, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. If there's any modules you want to see, if there's anything you think I could improve in these videos. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much. Take care. See you next time.